Welcome back to Out and About, everybody. You know, every day, more and more Americans are learning about the importance of freedom. They're also learning that there's no free in freedom, that it comes at a price. I met a most interesting man while out and about recently in Painesville, Minnesota. So these are all the books here, eh? Yeah, these are the books here, all about the Hamelberg raid. A man who for years found it tough to talk about his youth, and for good reason. You see, Milt Kuschel was one of those kids barely out of his teens, and then this. March of 1945, Milt Kuschel found himself smack dab in the middle of World War II. One of our tanks there was shooting over there and they were getting a lot of bullets coming back at him. And I got behind this tank and then pretty soon that tank took off and there I was standing out there all alone and those bullets were flying by me like you wouldn't believe. In what ended in a near suicide mission, Kuschel was part of Company A, 10th Armored Infantry Battalion under orders from General George Patton to go behind enemy lines and try and rescue Patton's son-in-law from a prison camp. It was the Hamelberg Raid on Hamelberg, Germany. Many American soldiers were killed in the attempt. Many, including Milt Kuschel, were captured. They too ended up prisoners of war. A bazooka nailed a tank I was right aside of, and my squad leader got his legs all full of shrapnel and I got blown into the ditch, and that's when we could see the prison camp. Well, the word at that time was there was 150 American officers in that camp, and that's what they wanted us to, to take. But when we got there, there were 1,500. We didn't know the raid was gonna take place until our Captain Bomb's tanks came over the hill and started shooting things up. We could hear the firing, and it sounded like American tanks and American machine guns. And uh, pretty soon, there was a few tanks that came through the, the front gate. And of course, everybody was happy. We thought that uh, this was uh, liberation for sure. I had at least five or six different things that were really life-threatening where I could have got killed on any one of them, and I didn't. So I was very lucky. On his way to attaining many military decorations, to keep his sanity, Kushel's thoughts were always of his sweetheart back home. Carving this shoe constantly reminded him of his love, Rosie Zapp. Oh, man, this is the shoe here, huh? This is the shoe? That's the shoe. That's the shoe with the carving on there. And, and here are the days. And them are all the days I worked on it. You got Rosie's name on there, and... Uh, you didn't want to forget the uh, name, did you? He evidently had a crush on her back then. <laughs> After his release as a POW, Kushel returned home. Milt and Rosie have been married for 55 happy years. How long have you been married, Rosie? Almost 55 years. Aren't, aren't you happy that he uh, thought of you back then, huh? He didn't know that right away. <laughs> thought so he much thought of you. you. I didn't know he was carving my name. <laughs> so it is that each month at Fort Snelling in Minneapolis, people like Milt Kushel are asked to relate their stories so that we may understand a little more what these brave hearts went through to preserve our most precious product, freedom. First I heard of, of uh, Waters, Colonel Waters, was when my squad leader, Nick Corrales, pulled me to the sidelines. He says our company just volunteered to go on a raid 50 miles inside, uh, 60 miles inside the enemy lines to rescue a guy, Pat and son-in-law. A leader is only as good as his troops. And I had exceptionally, exceptionally group of men. And I considered the 10th Armored Infantry, which was my battalion, one of the greatest units that fought in the ATO. The World War II History Roundtable originated in 1987 when Dr. Harold Deutsch, who is one of the preeminent historians of uh, World War II, uh, met with me and uh, decided that we should organize uh, a round table. Uh, our round table meets the second Thursday of each month, September through May. We uh, begin the programs at seven o'clock. Uh, our 
Our seating becomes limited uh, after about 6.30 because of the crowds that we have been drawing. Uh, the great thing about reliving World War II history, uh, you've got better books, better diaries, better pictures and movies, and you still have the people alive that you can ask and, uh, and get uh, answers from. Yes, there are several things that I will never forget uh, about my war experiences. I think for many, many years he did not talk about it. Every time I would ask him about something, he'd say, well, not now, I don't want to talk about it now, maybe tomorrow. Well, tomorrow never came until Fort Snelling programs opened it up and uh, these men now are starting to tell their stories that are very interesting. For Cushel and his soldier counterparts, these meetings are both therapeutic and informational. It helps to heal the mental wounds as well as let them know they are not alone in dealing with the past. Folks like Milt Cushel know very well that freedom comes with a very high price tag. The thing that we veterans would like for the young people to remember is that the freedom that we have in the USA did not come cheap. Nowadays, we older soldiers wonder if the young people realize what all the wars were really for. I hope we never have any more wars. They just bring a lot of sorrows. I would like to tell you to love your country and to respect our flag and stand at attention when you hear the national anthem. This is a great country. Love it. So in this day and age of needing heroes, add one more to the list. Private First Class Milt Cushel of Painesville, Minnesota. Stay with us still ahead on this Holiday Hero Show, local heroes from the Battle of Gettysburg, next on Out and About. <laughs> <laughs> 